I'm really glad I get to spend the first of the Sabbath hours with you. Thank you for coming out tonight. It's nice to be able to step into this calming sanctuary of time after a busy week. So some of you have seen our church bulletin and you've been able to read a little bit of um, Raluca's um, work history and what she is en enjoys. Um, but in honor of her topic tonight, it was very important for me to do what? Stand up at exactly 7 o'clock, right? <laughs> I had to. <laughs> um, I want to share with you a little bit of what Raluca's provided for me tonight, some things that she would like for you to know about her background. Um, Raluca grew up in communist Romania in the heart of the beautiful Carpathian Mountains. She was surrounded by family, nature, rich culture, and life was simple, but it was full of hard work. They celebrated every birthday, every Orthodox saint, every holiday, and it seemed like their family always had a reason to get together and celebrate something. Raluca's family had big gardens, a greenhouse to grow their own food. They had cows, chickens, sheep, pigs, they collected berries from the mountains and cut whole branches from the trees to dry the leaves for tea to use during the cold winter months. They made their own jelly and canned, canned sauerkraut, vegetables, and fruit. They washed clothes partially by hand and dried them on the clothesline, which they still do today, and they ironed everything. They milked the cows by hand, slaughtered their own animals, and even smoked the meat. They did not go out and buy hay for the animals, but in the spring, in the summer and fall, they went up into the steep mountains to cut the hay by hand, dry it, and transport it on an ox-drawn cart to their own barn loft. They had very little television, yet they were never bored because they were working in the fields and gardens and mountains. They had time to communicate while they worked and to think and talk and enjoy each other. All these years later, Raluca's family still does a lot of the same things that they did when she was little. It's similar to how life used to be in the United States many years ago. But why am I telling you this? Why does Raluca want you to know this? Well, there's something important you should know. It was critical to their survival to learn the skill of time management. They had to be efficient in season to get everything done. Keep that thought in your mind as you listen to Raluca this evening. I know that Raluca has a heart for God, a heart for people. She loves evangelism, she and her family. The topics that she's gonna be talking to us about this weekend are important because how we use our time, the environment we surround ourselves with directly impacts how well we're able to reach out to other people. So enough from me. We're very glad Raluca and her family have come from Florida to be here with us this weekend. So welcome and God bless you. I'm starting. Okay, good evening everyone. I feel so welcome. As a matter of fact, when I got to the hotel yesterday, there was a bag waiting for me. And I have mentioned to Karen the text that I was gonna look for um, soy milk or something. And I get to the hotel room and all these beautiful things are waiting for me and I feel very, very welcome here. So thank you so much for having our family here tonight and this weekend and we look so forward to spending this precious time together. So let's pray before we start. Father in heaven, we come before you tonight to thank you for the gift of the Sabbath to thank you that we can all be here tonight to learn about something very precious to you, and that is the talent of time. And as we direct our attention to the Bible and to quotes and to research that has been done, we just pray that you will touch each of our hearts. If some of us are doing too much, Father, guide us so we can do less. And if we're doing too little, guide us to do more for you. So we pray that you will be our teacher tonight. And Lord, as I pray with my sweet, new sweet friends, Tammy and 
67. Is everyone here tonight a part of this church community? Do we have any visitors? Okay. Okay, so you understand. Okay, Christ Object Lesson, page 367. Let's read it together. Of no talent has he given, will he require a more strict account than that of our time. Wow. So I had to read it again. Of no talent, God give, gave us all different many talents, right? But he's saying that of no talent, what? Had the, that he has given, will he require a more strict account than that of our time? So when I read this, this is what inspired this workshop. I was like, really? I had to read this second time. Then I read this in the Bible, Ephesians 5, 15, and 16. Let's read it together. See then that you walk circumstantly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. This is the translation NIV. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now, how many... Oh, what does he mean to redeem? What does he mean to redeem? It means to recover, regain, retrieve, to buy back, okay? So this is what she says in Christ Object Lesson 368. Let's read it together again. The only way in which we can redeem our time is by making the most of that which remains by being co-workers with God in his great plan of redemption. What I love about God, he always gives us new beginning. She told you my story. At the age of 17, I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and he has given me such beautiful peace that I look for it in the world and all the things of the world. And so God gives us new beginning. He said, redeem the time. But how can we redeem the time? It's already lost. Today was, is gone forever, right? What does he say? To make the most of what? Of that which remains. Very good. How many hours are in a week? 168 hours, okay? So let's say you use 40 to work, and how many hours of sleep? Let's say we average about 8 hours, let's say, and that's 56, right? So how much do we have left? 72 hours we have left each week. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. So this evening, we're going to look at principles, and I love acronyms. You're going to learn that about me because I have an acronym for each of the workshops. So to, and that's why it was time to declutter, and I do not have the one for the Sunday one on that, but welcome is our, one of our acronyms. Time, T-I-M-E. T stands for take time to identify what matters most. Take time to identify what matters most. Why? Christ Object Lesson says clarity leads to focus and efficiency because she talks about having definite aim. And Stephen Covey says this, most of us spend too much time on what is urgent and not enough time on what is important. Isn't that the truth? Every time you say yes to something, you are saying no to something else. How do we do that? By asking ourselves some questions. And it's never too, too late and it's never too early. What is my unique purpose? Why am I here? What brings me most joy and energizes me? How can I make the best contribution to my family my church, and my community. How? Asking more questions. Is this going to support me? Whatever this person is asking me, or whatever my work, or whatever my neighbor, is this going to support the assignment God gave me? Is this a priority right now? Now let's talk for a moment on the word priority, right? Okay, so the word priority came in the English language in about 1400s. And for 500 years... It stays singular, which is what? Priority, right? But guess what happened 500 years later? It became priorities, which is plural. Can you have more than one priority? Well, maybe two or three or four, right? 
but not that many. Have you ever been to a meeting where they had like 20 things on the agenda and all of them had to be done yesterday? <laughs> Have you? Is this the priority right now? Is this the best possible use of me? God has a specific assignment for each one of us. Do you agree? Yes? What is God's call for my life? Am I using my time effectively to fulfill that assignment? Am I in sync with God's will? You do not have to take a note because I'm going to be passing out a handout with all these questions. So this is what Ellen White talks about what matters most. And this is kind of compiled from the book Christ Object Lessons. She says this, forming characters, would you say that matters most? So whatever helps me to form a character for the kingdom of God, prepare for the what? Searching judgment. That's a high call we have. Labor for the salvation of souls. Acquire knowledge and mental culture. Acquire habits of order, which we're going to talk about on Sunday, right? Acquire habits of order, thoroughness, and dispatch, and carry home burdens. So if you compile all that she talked about in that chapter, these are the things that she talks about mattering the most. Now, what does that mean? Ellen White says in Desire of Ages, whatever one's calling in life is, his first interest should be what? To win souls for Christ. Does that mean our children? And my husband is going to come up and share a short story. Mm -hmm. Well, here you can see, uh, this is my son, Josiah. They're holding that paper airplane. Josiah, do you mind standing up for us? <laughs> He's a little taller now. He's a little taller than I am. It's a little hard for me to admit. But... Um, <laughs> Josiah and I got to spend a lot of time as he was growing up. We did a lot of different projects. We did woodworking and we did uh, paper airplanes. But I'll tell you, um, we did a lot of talking and, and reading the Bible together. And we just, we had a lot of fun together. Did hiking and, of course, with his sister as well. Sarah is his sister who's in the back seat of our airplane there. You can see next to my wife, DeLuca. Um, and so we got a lot of time together, but I'll tell you, the truth is, what inspired me was um, a little bit of a sad story. I, I don't mean to tell a sad story, but I think it will give you um, something to remember. And that is, my brother had t uh, two children, and his 19-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old <clears throat> daughter. His 19-year-old daughter had started flying soloed on her 14th birthday in a glider, um, soloed on her 16th birthday in a power plane, got her private license and seaplane rating on her 17th birthday. On her 18th birthday, she got her commercial, a multi-engine, I forget what else, on her birthday. Her goal was to be an astronaut. And my brother um, did a lot of things with her. They did kayak together, they hiked together, they did a lot of things. Unfortunately, she was involved um, at 19 years old in a plane crash. And uh, it was a, a tough experience for all of us. But the thing that I will never forget is that my brother told me the first thing he said is, I wish I had spent more time with Heather. And from that day forward, I made it my goal to spend time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So to spend can, time with yeah. my children. So we lost Heather when she was 19. And, and God allowed us, Joe, for just a few months before she passed away to move to Colorado. We're living in Virginia. That's where my husband was based. And we moved to Colorado. And we were with Heather. And just, you know, she just went flying. And, and um, it was a very, very hard time. But, but that really stuck with me that the, the first thing that came to his mind is, I wish I had spent more time. More time. What we're going to do now, my husband is going to help, and Tammy are going to pass out the handouts, and we're going to go to page number two. Page number one is the um, 
cover page, and we're going to go and do an activity, okay? And we're not going to share this time. As you get it, just go to page two on the, on the other side of, of the, yeah, page number two, and go ahead and start filling it out. Go ahead and start filling it out because that's what, if we're going to take time to identify what matters most to us. And if anybody needs a pen, we have some available. Does anybody need a pen? Okay. If you can keep your hand up for just a moment. Okay. Keep it up. Okay. And then we will take a couple volunteers if they would like to come up. And if they're willing and they are transparent about it, if they're willing to share what matters most to you. It can just be one word. My wife. Or you know, God has put in my heart to do this A, B, C for him, okay? Something like that. So uh, if you're ready, you can kind of up. But let's just give you a few minutes. Maybe you already know. Maybe you need to just take this home and think about it for a week or a month or six months, right? So take time to answer those questions.
Okay, I think to keep it moving, and if you are not ready, take time. This is going to take some time of and prayer and surrendering to God if you're unclear about what God's assignment for you is. But would anyone be willing to come on up and share? I was thinking a couple of people. Anybody courageous? Or you can just stay where you are. Yes, our sister back there. Did you raise your hand? Yay, thank you. Okay. The number, just whatever you like. Oh, I didn't get very much down. But, um, my highest priority is to be more like Jesus. Amen. So forming character, right? To be more like Jesus. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, and I didn't get to finish this one, but what it basically is what are my roles in the season of life that I'm in right now? I love to help people. I love to share information I get and um, share what I have, my experiences and what I have learned from them. Beautiful. Um, what is my unique purpose? To bring happiness. I mean, I know that the real, real true happiness comes from having a close relationship with God. Absolutely. But for those who don't have that relationship, um, I feel it's my unique purpose to bring some sunshine into their life. Yes, amen. Uh, what are my natural and developing gifts, talents, spiritual gifts, strengths, abilities, and passion? Now, that's a hard one because I, I play the piano, and I, um, I don't know. Uh, and it will take some time. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, how many do you want me to answer? Oh, I think that's awesome. Thank you so much. Maybe one more? Would, that's okay. Um, how can I make my best contribution to my community right now? By reflecting God's character. Amen. That's beautiful. Very good. Excellent. Anybody else has the courage? One more volunteer? One more volunteer? Anybody? Just one thing? You want to say one thing? What about one of the young people? You guys are just look so perfect over there. <laughs> One of you? Okay, maybe. Oh, sure, you want to say one? Okay, here's the mic. I guess we're recording, so. All right. Yes. <clears throat> um, so I did the last one. What activities matter most to me in personal and professional life? Um, so broke it down into both, uh, spending time with friends and family, uh, Beautiful. personal, um, and doing the, for work, professional, doing the best job I can, uh, working on projects that are blessing and benefit to others. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for being courageous. I appreciate that. Thank you. And Miss Tammy is going to come up and read one question. Our beautiful sister, uh, Karen, has purchased some gifts, door prizes. So we're going to have some door prizes. And the first door prize question is? Who made a list of uh, things to do this week? Who made a list of things to do this week? Okay. Why don't we? Okay. Oh, we'll go to the next one. Okay. If we don't mind, because that's kind of like, that's amazing. How many of you raised your hands? Okay, well, you know what? We did it, so please come and pick a gift. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Those of you that made a to-do list this week, please come and get a gift from the table, okay? It's about planning, and it's about time management, right? So please come on up and take a gift from the table. Thank you so much, Tammy. Excellent. Yes, all five of you. Yeah, right here. Please come. Yep, yep. Good. Anybody else? The five of you that, that um, made a list? And look at my sweet friend back. Ooh, good to see you. I'm here because of her. She heard me at an alumni weekend, and she told Karen about me. So that's why I'm here. So, I'm so I feel so privileged to know Pat and Karen. She's been so wonderful to work with and organize this weekend. Okay, so go ahead and choose one of your gifts. And guess what? We have door prizes for all the workshops tomorrow afternoon. And Sunday morning is probably going to be even more. So we look forward to that. Okay, so T-I-M-E. So T stands for what? Take time to identify like you did tonight. Did it take that much time? But just kind of taking time to reflect, right? Taking time to identify. I stands for invest 
in planning to do what matters most, right? What does that mean? We have to take it to God and we have to pray. And I say, Lord, this is what I identify as important things to me, as things that matter to me. What is your will? Is this what you want me? Is this, are these the gifts that you gave me? Pray and surrender because we're intentional that affects our values and our goals. The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to what? To schedule your priorities. Why? Because if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. If we didn't plan this weekend and Karen and I were working behind the scenes, would it have happened? There was a lot of planning from organizing everything to buying airline tickets to getting here from the airport to eating so that we don't, you know, what happens if we don't eat, right? So there's a lot of planning besides all the work she did, planning here at the church, getting ready. That's just one example. Now, I want to talk to you for a few moments about Jim Collins. He's a business expert. He's an author. And he talks to businesses about the undisciplined pursuit of more. And he says this, that when companies become successful, there's a tendency to want to do more, right? And that's when the fall happens, is because they're not prepared for it. And I wonder if that's also applicable to our churches, to our schools. When we do too much, right, we're not prepared. We are successful. God is blessing. And then we have a tendency to want to do more, but we're not ready to do more, right? We want to continue to do what we do well and ask God to send us more help, right? Think about Steve Jobs. Did you know that at one point in Apple, he cut down 70% of their work? And he said, we're going to cut down 70% so we can focus on the 30 and make them the best. Have they been successful? You see, could that be true for our lives, our professions, our ministries, our schools, and our families? So what is the greatest obstacle of breakthrough? Is success, because success leads to more options and opportunities that we become spread too thin. We grow too much without having the right staff, the right volunteers. We become unproductive, and then we become stagnant. But the truth is we are, you are, the CEO of your own life. And we cannot allow other people's agenda to hijack the call that God has given to each one of us, right? Then I came across this quote in Ministry of Healing 208. Let's read it together. She says this, if every moment, join me, if every moment were valued and rightly employed, we should have time for everything that we need to do for ourselves and for the world. Invest in planning to do what matters most. What do we do? We first ask God to give us clarity, and we set how many goals for the next three months? 15, 20, 30, 1. And we take one hour each week to plan. And one day every three months to assess what has happened in the last three months. Where, where do we need to adjust? Christ Object Lesson 37, she says this, By tact the method, some will accomplish as much as in five hours as others do in ten. And I thought, what? By what? Tact and method, some will accomplish as much in five hours as others do in ten. Slow habits have to be overcome. Things have to become effortless. There is a book out called Effortless. It's in my list to, do, uh, to read books. I will give you an example. Last week, my husband is the head elder of our church. Last week, we discovered that some of our new believers, and we worked really hard for our new believers, which is new people that came to our church, and we probably have about 15 in the last two, three years that have joined our church. Maybe more, but 15 that we can think about. And we realized that there were some circumstances that they needed some encouragement. That should, we should have them over. And last week, I got my certification as a professional organizer. So I was in class from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. It was something that I wanted to do for my future ministry. And so I said, Lord, I don't have time. And we'll talk about that tomorrow in hospitality. 
but we need to do this. So please help me. So I talked to another friend. I was willing to bring some food. I didn't ask anyone else to bring food. I looked in my drawer. I organized a little bit. I said, we have enough food. We'll be fine. We're just doing snacks. I told them, don't expect a big dinner, but you don't say that, right? You just say, hey, we're just going to have snacks for dinner, okay? So they all came. So the picture on top is them studying the Bible. We had eight of them come. Some had health issues. Two of them had COVID and so forth. They just came back from a cruise and they couldn't come. So we had them over, and we had a beautiful time. It was a 5 o'clock. Guess what time everyone left? Some of them left close to 10. So that's like five hours. We just had the most beautiful, blessed time together, studying the Bible, praying together, just kind of talking to them. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because you see the pictures on the bottom, and that's something I'm not going to show the hospitality one because I'm teaching people to keep things very simple. But I do love to decorate. That's another certification I'm going to get is decorating a redesigner. And so I love to decorate. And so it, when we were looking for an ottoman for our family room that you see there in that picture in the center, I told my family, I want something that I can store. So it, it serves double purpose, right? You can put your feet up when you're studying the Bible or you're having a conversation, but you can also store items, right? Double usage. And in that ottoman, I have a lot of my tables that you see at the bottom picture. And so within 15 minutes, I can set up for a party and just bring a few flowers, a few candles, and we can just lay out our food and it can make it look special. And so the reason that helped me is because it's very easy to get to and very easy to put away. And so going back to that, by tact the method, some will accomplish. So find things to do in life to save time. What would save time? What about economy of time? We know we talk about economy of money, but Ellen White says this, a resolute purpose, persistent industry, and careful economy of time will enable men to acquire knowledge and mental discipline, which will qualify them for what? Almost any position of influence. What about when you go to the grocery store? How many of you went to the grocery store this week? Okay. Now, how many of you have, and I know it's confession time, how many have gone to the grocery store and they just couldn't remember if you had diced tomatoes or not, and you bought again, right? So when you got home, you were putting stuff away, and you realized that you already had five to ten cans, and you shouldn't have really bought another two to four cans of diced tomatoes, right? Now, what would have happened if you would have taken an inventory, or maybe you have something, an app or something that helps you keep an inventory of your pantry, and when you went to the grocery store, you knew exactly if you had that for this particular recipe, wouldn't it have saved time, right? Well, that's okay. You can deal with diced tomatoes, right? But the point is to just make sure that we take time and we use our time wisely when it comes to grocery shopping and careful of time when we drive to town. I'm sure for you guys live out here in the country and you have to go to town like 30 minutes away, right? What's the closest grocery store? 15. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay. We used to live in Colorado, and we, we were about 15, 20 minutes from the grocery store. But when you go to town, I don't know how you guys do it, but I try to plan multiple stops so I don't have to go back the next day. And I know people like my husband will just go and do one errand, right? And, and that's okay, right? But God is calling us to maybe look of how we can be more careful with our time. Does it make sense? We are all growing in different areas, right, honey? The talent of time. So let's go back to forming characters, preparing for the searching judgment, labor for the salvation of souls, acquire knowledge and mental culture, acquire habits of order, thoroughness and dispatch, and carry home burdens. How do I identify and invest? Ask God for wisdom. Protect the planning time carefully. Don't plan things too tightly. Have you ever planned too many things and you felt like you couldn't get them all done and you felt overwhelmed? Have you had that? I've had that. Guard your morning routine. Remember the first things in the morning kind of set your whole day? And use little moments wisely. What I want you to do now is go to the third page in your handout, which is I. The I. Identify 
I'm mean, sorry, invest in planning to do. So now you wrote, for example, our young man over here wrote something about spending time with friends. So now he's going to put down investing and planning. So I am planning to spend time with friends Saturday night or in a month from today. I haven't seen my friend for a year. I want to plan to spend time with Max next week on Saturday night after sundown. I want to go out and have a nice dinner. I'm just giving an example, right? Um, our sister, he, she said, I like to be a blessing to my community. And that, that may mean for her calling her next door neighbor and having a little picnic in her backyard when the weather is nice and warm. Or maybe he's making a phone call and saying, how are you? How are things going for you? Does it make sense that we're moving from what is important, what matters most to us, to now putting them on our calendar. I'm going to do this on this specific day. And then you have some sheets behind that that shows you the whole year, and then it has your daily planner. So kind of start thinking of some of those activities that, you know, are harder to do. And we have more uh, handouts. If anybody came later, did everyone get a handout? Okay. Okay. You know, it could be for you, um, collect all your commitments. Make a list of all the things you've said yes to, but you haven't done yet. Okay, kind of like a mind dump. So you write them all on a piece of paper, and then you go back to, let's say, your mom. Mom, I promised you I was going to come over and do this for you, but I will not be able to do it for the next month. Can we do it in April, or can we do it in June? Does it make sense so you cannot negotiate? you know, your timeline if you're too busy at the moment. And so you can also do that when planning to do what's important. So I'll give you a few minutes for that. And because it's Sabbath, we don't want to do too much of the work part. So I'm just going to give you a, a few moments just to maybe do something spiritual for someone. Sister had a very good question. We'll address that. So, Tammy, why don't we go ahead and uh, get ready for our prize number two question. And anybody wants to share something they've been really wanted to do, but now they put it on the calendar, something spiritual for someone. One thing. Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Did you raise your hand? Oh, Sorry. Yeah, you put on the calendar, let's say you want to go visit a friend at the hospital. Boom, I'm going to go Tuesday. Just oh. something where you invest in doing it. You write it down. I want to go do this. Okay. Anybody else? That's all right. Anybody else? Okay. So let's go ahead and do the, um, let's go ahead and do the door prize because we have other activities that I think can be. Uh, who made a menu plan for last week? Okay. We have two ladies. Come on up. Oh, you got one? Okay. Go ahead. It's for you. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Menu. Who made a menu plan for last week? Did you have a menu plan last week? And if you did, you get to go and get a gift. Awesome. Okay. Okay, now, I mean, letter M. So T, take time to identify what matters most. I stands for invest in planning to do what matters most. And M stands for? Make it happen, right? Now we move to action. Christ Object Lesson 370. He, the Christian, needs to exercise his mind in planning how to use the time as to secure the best results, right? Ecclesiastics 9.10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. 
do it with your might. And this, our, our high calling 282 says, cultivate the what? The habit of doing what? Your best in everything you what? Undertake. Wow. So if I'm going to do my best, I should be more careful about what I take on, right? You probably heard the saying, if you try to do too many things, you won't do anything well. That is so true. That kind of goes along with what she said. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. So if we do less with consistency and purpose, we'll accomplish more than by doing a list of overwhelming tasks. I remember my husband saying that, you, Joe, you read the Bible. You, he goes through the Bible three, four times a year because he listens to it on his way to work. Listening to the Bible and learning and immersing ourselves in the word of God. Cultivate that habit. How do we make it happen? We move from planning to action. We want to be efficient and productive, not just busy. We want to break the cycle of wasted time. And my husband and I are working together on how we can do that even more and have a written schedule. Christ Object Lesson 370 says, A few moments here and a few moments there, if a book were kept at hand and these fragments of time were improved in what? Study reading, or careful thought, what might not be accomplished? But what do we do when you have a few moments in there? What do we do? And I do this too, so I'm guilty of it. What do we do? We pick up our phones, right? What did she say we should be doing? Study, read, and what? Careful thought. Hmm. That's very interesting. We just start deleting messages. We start watching TV. But small moments have great power. Small moments have great power. Bits of time for bits of joy. Choosing to read on the way to work. Breaks, use it for meditation and prayer. If dinner with the family is not possible for your work schedule or your wife's, do a family breakfast. Look at the whole time of your week and see where the good stuff can go. Use those fragments of time carefully. Have a list of shallow time. I have that in my notes. And if I just have like, I, don't, I have an appointment, but I have like 10, 15 minutes before I have to leave, what do I do? What do I have to do? Shallow work. Go weeding or go, you know, clean the pool. Go power wash or just set the power wash so you can do it the next morning. Do something that's shallow. Shall, you know what I mean by shallow? That doesn't take a lot of work to think through, just like simple things like weeding, uh, working in the yard. There's always something you can do. Did you know that when the smor smartphone came out, the chewing gum sales plummeted? Do you know why? So when the, when the smartphone came out, the chewing gum sales plummeted. And what they have found, and this is something you can just start watching around you, maybe in Texas is different, and I hope it is. But um, when you went to the grocery store before, and probably s some of you still do, you kind of look around and people pick gum, right? But now what happens when you have to stay in line? You go to the grocery store and just watch it. Maybe Texas is different, I hope it is. Just people get their phone out, right? So the sales of chewing gum just pff, went all the way down. And that shows us that we are in trouble because we don't have those moments of thinking anymore, right? We, are so, we have so many things coming at us, and yet we are told what might not be accomplished. If instead of using those moments for reading, for studying, for careful thought, for thinking of God, for thinking how to talk to people and reaching. We were just in the bus yesterday, and guess what? We got in the bus, and I was looking down at everybody. So you can't even have a conversation anymore. My husband, Joe, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Well, for years I've been riding the employee buses from the parking lot to the airport where I, I fly for the airlines. And um, used to be that the, it was kind of noisy because everybody's chit-chatting. But I've noticed over the years, especially since the smartphones have come out, conversations have gone to zero, and people 
are just all heads down. Now, the chiropractors love it because they get what they call texting now. <laughs> but, but the conversations have gone down, and that communication time is almost gone. So careful thought. Use those moments for study and reading. Did you know that one study found that the average person touches their smartphone how many times a day? 2,617 times in a single day. No wonder we can't focus. Well, little moments have great power. Have a list of those lists. There's always something you can do. She also says this, decide how long a time is required for a given task and then bend every effort toward accomplishing the work in the given time. The exercise of the will power will make the hands move more deftly. Do you know what the word deftly means? Move into a neatly skilled and quick way. That's what it means. The timer. Have you ever, ladies, had a very messy kitchen and you're like, how am I going to get this cleaned up? You know, and they say you had a party or just even a few friends over or just you just made a lot of food and there was a big mess. Take a timer and say, hey, guys, before you go back out to work, can you help me for five minutes, please? Set a timer. And when you have that timer, come on, guys, let's see how quickly we can get this done. It's amazing how many times it's blessed my life to have those five minutes of four, five, six, seven, ten people helping me, it would have taken me an hour or two, right? So set that timer. Also, how long does it take to do something? You know how sometimes you have this task that you're supposed to do, like, you know, something hard, like, you know, I have to clean the master bathroom, or I have to go do this assignment, and you think it's going to take me all this time. Last week, we, I was doing my certification, and our teacher told us to organize something. And she said, time yourself. So I went to the bathroom, and even though my drawer was not that bad, it took me six minutes to just kind of go through it, you know, when you get something, a new product, and you put it in, and you know how things get cluttered? And it took me six minutes, and I thought, oh, it's going to take me 15 to 20. But sometimes the task may take you longer. So just kind of time yourself and see if next time you can do it faster and better, right? Stephen Covey says this, you have to decide what your highest priorities are and have the courage. How? Let's read those three words together. Pleasantly, smilingly, non-apologetically say no to other things. And the way you do that is by having a what? A bigger yes burning inside you, just like Jeremiah, just like Paul, just like our sisters that I want to share Jesus. That is why I say no to this other thing, because it's just burning in my heart. What is the criteria for saying yes or no? The questions. Does it keep me or take me off of the assignment that we just talked about, right? Is it consistent with the word of God? Is the Holy Spirit speaking to my heart? What is the counsel of spiritual individuals? What are the open and closed doors? This is what my husband and I guide our lives by when we have to make decisions. If it isn't a clear yes, then it's what? It's a clear no. How did Jesus manage time? You know, Jesus was the ultimate essentialist. He was the son of God that came to die. He was the lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. Every moment for him was precious. He prayed, fasted, to be in tune with the Father. I have a friend who fasts every week, one day every week, to be in tune with the Father. Jesus had a clear mission. He discipled, but yet he stayed focused. Do you think Jesus said yes to every opportunity? Absolutely no. Jesus did not say yes to. How, think of all the times Jesus said no. And, you know, they, the Jewish people wanted him to do this and that. Jesus had a lot of patience with, to live with all the pressures that were put on him. He was aware of what the disciples wanted, right? Yet, he didn't do everything that was popular. He was the ultimate essentialism. He also said the harvest is plentiful. And what? Did he say overwork? Because, you know, we, a Seventh-day Adventist, have a clear mission, right? We have a clear vision of what God, what, God, what God wants us to do, right? To take the gospel to the whole world. 
But that can get very overwhelming, right? When I first became a Seventh-day Adventist, I mean, I would go in the bus. I would be at the train station. I felt like I had to win the whole world because I couldn't hold it inside. But I soon learned that God did not call me to overwork. And he hasn't called you to overwork, right? When my husband and I, about five years ago, were going to the largest church that is not a college church in Florida, Forest Lake, Forest Lake Academy. Forest Lake Academy or Forest Lake Church, 3,500 members. And one day, God began to impress upon us that we needed to go to a church closer to our house. This one was about 35, 40 minutes with no traffic, sometimes if traffic, about an hour. And we began praying, and God impressed us to go to a small church with about 30, 40 members that was about eight miles from our house. And we said, Lord, but we have small children. We can't go there. What friends are they going to have? We can't. No, we can't do this. And we kept struggling with God. We kept praying. But we did. We began going to this small church. And God is so good. And I will tell you a little bit more later when I talk about the calendar. But now our church has anywhere between 150 to 200 attending. Praise God. And when we began to see how God was going to move upon the hearts of the people to come, and we'd done a lot of evangelism, we felt very overwhelmed. We couldn't, it was just so much to do. And Jesus reminded me of this promise. He said, the harvest is plentiful, but what? But the workers are few. And what did he say to do? Simple. God's plan is always simple, right? What did he say? To pray. Okay, Lord, we're going to pray. So we begin to pray, and guess what? God began bringing all these helpers, and we're so grateful. Some of the most talented people, as a matter of fact, you're going to hear a song that one of our church members, she helped me. I gave her all the words I wanted, and so we composed the song for tonight's lecture, so we uh, workshop, so you'll get to actually learn it. So when it seems overwhelming, God says to pray. He's not calling any of us to overwork. He's calling us to pray. So review, list your most important tasks, schedule your priorities first, schedule your known events, set realistic time margins, do shallow works on breaks, and when interrupted, you adjust and get back to the plan. Do not procrastinate. And we'll talk about procrastination on Sunday. How? What about writing your next Christmas, next year, the Christmas letter that you're going to write in December, writing it now? And why? Have you ever got a Christmas letter from someone and you're like, wow, I can't believe all the stuff they did this year. Anybody out there? And they were like telling you what they, you know, they traveled and all this. And I'm thinking, what can I tell you tonight to do? Because I don't want to encourage you to go out and, you know, try to go to Europe like this other people did. Because not, you know, we may not be able to fit on the budget right now, right? But what about in your letter you can say, hey, we went to every park in our county and we hiked around. I mean, isn't that a great thing? It's free. It gets you out in nature, walking, breathing in fresh air, keeping the natural loss of health, right? What else could you be doing that would be good? Wave. I volunteer my community service center all last year, every Sunday or every Monday or every Wednesday. Wouldn't that be a great thing to do? So think about December and want to write your letter now. Write it now, right? And because from that, you are going to take three to six goals. Hey, this year, I want to go to every park. Let's begin walking. Well, I want to run two to three miles every day or three, four times a week. I don't know what God puts in your heart. Or I want to do something at the hospital. I want to go once a month to visit someone in the hospital. And then break them down in doable steps. So, I would like to give you that chance, but I don't want to keep you here all night. So just, you have that on your sheet. I think it's the last page. And you can write your Christmas letter now. And we won't take time, but just take it home. Ministry, relationship, and yourself. Two to three items. Look at the next week and see how you can plan them in. And if you go to your handout, you will have for M, make it happen. Fit it in somehow, what God has put in your heart to do for him. Fit it in, in your schedule. Now, I'm going to share with you, I'm being vulnerable here with you tonight, what I am doing in my life, okay? For my personal, Josiah, is this the, oh, it doesn't work, okay, sorry. Personal, 
exercise three to five times a week, education, I'm getting some certification for my future work. As a wife, my husband and I are going to go uh, to a workshop on communication, and my son Josiah loves good meals at home, so I cook for him. Good vegan meals, right? And um, the, I want to be a better gardener. It's really hard to garden in Florida, really hard. I used to have this 30 to 50 gardens in Colorado and in my country, Romania, and in Virginia, Florida. It's really hard, so I'm learning. But I'm trying to do more of that. Local ministry, I host people. I started and um, I was the leader of Shine, which is our evangelism program for f almost four years. But now I'm discipling somebody else. I'm on the discipline pursuit of less, so I am discipling somebody else to carry on the load. We spread the load. And declutter, I'm working on my house as well because I have to live what I preach, right? So, you know, we accumulate things. So those are the things that how I plan my focus. And then once every three months, I look back. How did I do? Where do I need to adjust? What am I doing too much? Where am I doing too little? Now, when you look at your day, instead of writing a bunch of to-do lists, consider doing this. What does it say there? What are today's most important tasks? And write three. If you work full time, there's not a lot of time left, right? So what can I do tonight? What can I do this week? What is most important? And E is for what? Evaluate and adjust. Why? Because we want to have small wins every day. Did you know Benjamin Franklin, every night, he would ask, what good did I do today? That's what he would ask. Benjamin Franklin was an amazing. He's the one that said, early to bed, early to rise, make a man healthy, wealthy, and wise is so true. So he would do a nightly audit. Consider doing that. Health, take care of your health and have an accountability body. Somebody in the church that's doing this workshop, hey, let's hold each other accountable for the next month. Let's see how we're doing with our goals and values and what God puts in our hearts. I love this incredible concept that says this, the best asset we have for making a contribution to our, the world is what? Is ourselves. If we underinvest in ourselves, so, and by that I mean our minds, our bodies and our spirits, we what? We damage the very tool we need to make our highest contribution. And I can tell you so many of my friends that are now so sick, they can't do hardly anything. And so that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this. The disciplined pursuit of less is less so we can do more, really. That's the concept. The best asset we have to give to the world is ourselves, right? So do not underinvest. Go for a walk. Invest in whatever would help your body be in better shape, be in better, um, a better tool for the kingdom of God. Invest in that. Don't underinvest. That's the highest contribution. Time is highly elastic, adjustable. We can make more time, but we can adjust to accommodate what is most important. If somebody would have said to me, Raluca, do you have seven hours this coming week? I would have said, no, seven hours, that's a lot of time. No, you should go do this, this, this. You, you take seven hours to do it. I said, no. But guess what? We got the news that a hurricane was coming to Florida. So we got in this, we had to put aside everything, including appointments, including anything I was planning to do, right? And my husband and I, our family, we tried to tie things down from the trampoline to our boat. And, and oh, my goodness, it was so much work. We had boards. To, you know, at one point, we even cut them, and now we put them up. And you go get groceries, and you go get water. You guys don't get hurricanes here, right? But you probably get other weather, maybe tornadoes. But hurricanes are serious. So guess what? The hurricane became the priority, right? So time is highly elastic. It will kind of stretch to fit what you put in it, right? Now, if somebody says to you, Karen, I want you to wash your windows this week. And Karen will be like, man, I have so many other things to do. Washing my windows is not really a priority, right? But what would happen if they say to you, Karen, I'm going to pay you $10,000 to wash your windows this week. What happens? You're going to put everything aside, and you are going to be washing that, those windows, right? So time is highly elastic. 
we treat our priorities like we would treat the equivalent of a hurricane coming, a water leak. If you had a water leak in your basement, guess what? You will put everything aside and take care of the water leak, right? Everything I do every moment is my choice. So instead of saying I don't have time, I don't have time doesn't exist. It's not really, you do have time. The truth of that statement is, it's not a priority. Isn't that the truth? It's not a priority because if it was a priority, you will make time for it, just like washing the windows, right? Now, do we have to be flexible with our time? And that's what my sister brought out. We make our plans. We write down lists. Let's read this together. Lay all your plans before God. To be carried out or given up as his providence shall indicate. Accept his plans instead of your own, even though their acceptance require the abandonment of cherished projects. Wow. So we lay our plans at the feet of Jesus, and we ask him to let them go forward or to take them out in a, from our lives if they're not according to his providence. Am I doing too little? Am I doing too much? Is this the season I'm being called to do this? Once you give yourself permission to stop trying to do it all, to stop yes, saying yes to everyone, you then can make the highest contribution towards the things that really, really matter. The life of an essentialist is not about how to get more things done. It's about how to get the right things done. How did Jesus deal with interruption? Do we, and that's what my sister back there asked me. What do you do? You make a plan and then you have an interruption. And my advice to you is go with God's plan always. You make the plan, you surrender to God, but you watch for divine appointments. One hint about your phone. Did you know that if you log out, let's say you have a hard time with Facebook or with Instagram, and you, you, know, you kind of get sucked in and you can spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes, sometimes time yourself. You think, oh, I'm just going to spend five minutes. Time yourself sometimes. It would be interesting to, to, to watch that statistic. But if you log out of Facebook and every time you have to watch Facebook is you have to log in, let me tell you, just doing that is going to discourage you from doing it a lot less. It's going to discourage you for, from doing it more. So make good habits easy to do and make Bad habits, harder. Does that make sense? Okay. So how did Jesus deal with interruption? What about the children? Divine appointments. I remember we were at ASI a couple of years ago, and there was a, some college mates of my daughter, and I said, I'm not ready. I've been here since Wednesday. I had a meeting for um, Living Hope School of Evangelism. I'm on, I'm on their board, and I'm like, I don't have time to have people over, Lord. But I allow God to change my heart, and I had them over, and we had a wonderful, wonderful time. So those interruptions can be another divine appointment. So that's how you have to be in tune with God. Does it make sense? We plan, but we surrender those plans to God, and we let his will be brought in each of our lives. And when we finish whatever he brought to our lives, we get right back to it. Does it make sense? Okay. And that was my choice. Um, uh, right when I was having children, I used to work for It Is Written, and they called me. They wanted me back. And I basically, in a very nice way, I had to watch, smilingly, non-apologetically say no, because God gave me another job, which was to raise my children. Christ Objects Lesson 369 says, Stand as what? As minute men, ready for service at a moment's notice. The opportunity that is now yours to speak for some needy soul may never be offered again. Did you know there are 151,600 people die each day? 6,316 each hour. 105 die each minute. Nearly two people die each second. And Lawai says that all around us are souls going down to ruin us hopeless. It's terrible. It's that which befell Sodom. Every day, the probation of some is closing. Every hour, some are passing beyond the reach of mercy. God's work is our highest priority. So how do we plan it? And this is our shine calendar for the 2023-2024.
we do it once a month. We go out as a whole church, and we do different things for the kingdom of God. It's beautiful, and someday maybe I'll share that with you. But this is our calendar, so we fit it in in weekly because we have to get ready for that once a month. It doesn't just show up at the church and you go pass out 1,500 great controversies in two hours, right? And we have streams of light come, and we had a great time. It doesn't happen. There's a lot of work to be done before, right? God's work is our priority. Some people ask me what kind of apps are helpful. Reminders is a good app. Evernote, Trello, Shop Shop, where you put your grocery store, and I have a list of different stores I need to shop, and notes. But to be honest with you, with you, my favorite one is still a paper planner. And my favorite one is the Franklin Covey. Franklin Covey planner. I just like paper. Anybody else here likes paper? Okay, I love digital, and I use some of these other ones, but my favorite is paper. So, you know, do what's best for you. The thing is to write it down. And they say that people who wrote down their goals accomplish 42% more than the people who didn't. So that's kind of good to do, right? Write it down. By writing down your goal, your brain engages in a different way than just thinking about them. Now, what is the time waste in your life, and how do you plan to change it? Just think for just a minute. Why do I waste my time in and what can I replace it with? Maybe instead of doing Facebook, maybe you can have time to carefully think about something, right? What about reading a book, reading the Bible more, praying? Think for a moment. How do you say no? Remember, smilingly, well, gently say, thank you so much for thinking of me, but this is not going to keep me on the assignment God gave me. And instead, if they come to you and they say, some, they ask you something and it does, it aligns with what God gave you, you said yes, right? We're not going to say no to everything, but we want to make sure it aligns with God's assignment for us. Take a log of your last week in your free time. What did I do last week? If you did something significant, you will remember, right? So that's why Benjamin Franklin took a what? A nightly audit. What good did I do today? It could be a small text. It could be writing a note. It could be making a phone call. It doesn't have to be that complicated, right? So the conclusion is we must be aware that we do not become overburdened, even with what seems the necessary cares of life, that we are unable to do the most essential work. If every moment were valued and rightly employed, we should have what? Time for everything that we need to do for ourselves and for the world. The Bible says in Psalms 90, 12, so teach us to number our days so that we may get a heart of wisdom. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. There finally, there's laid out for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have loved his appearing. And my friend Tammy is going to come on up. Uh, who worked in the, in the garden the last week for at least an hour? <laughs> Please come. Okay. Yes, come. Come. We have six gifts. <laughs> oh, great! That's awesome. Well, you, yeah, you, 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 you get a gift for it. That's right. Please. Was yes. Else? Yes. Yes. Please come and take a gift. Please. Any guard? Any, any outside? Guard. Yes. Please do. I'm, st I'm starting to see the beautiful greenery coming back, and it's great. Please come. Anybody else? Okay, go ahead to the next question. Okay. We have two more gifts after that, or three. Um, who exer fi exercised five times this week? Okay. Okay, Kieran, Kieran come on up. Yay, you get to have one. <laughs> no, these two, it's two. okay. These you two deserve two. it. Those two, too, can you do one? Oh, yes, please. Anybody who exercised five times, please. Yes. We have perfect. That's it. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, to wrap it all up, let's read 9 Testimony 221.1. 1. 221.1. 1. 
If Christians were to what? Act in concert, moving forward as one, under the direction of one power for the accomplishment of one purpose, they would what? Move the world. Whoa, wouldn't that be awesome to see that accomplished in our lives? But none of these things move me, nor I count my life dear to me, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. So for us, we are on the discipline of lust because we have a sense of urgency. We know. Do you believe the Lord is coming soon? Do you believe Jesus is coming soon? So we have a renewed sense of energy, a Seventh-day Adventist. We have a mission to accomplish. And so to put everything in place... We are going to teach you a song. So I'm going to let you listen to it first, and then I'll put it on the screen, okay? Do you feel so distracted when you have so much to do? Is your schedule overcrowded and you feel you're at the zoo? Perhaps you need to take a look up on track. It matters how you use your time, for you never get it back. Time is precious. Time is short. The Bible tells us to redeem it. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. So make the most of what is left. In our lives, we must make choices as we take Amen. And that's actually premiered tonight for the first time. Okay, it is. Okay, so let's learn it together. So I asked my husband, who is a musician, and um, Trent, thank you so much for playing for us. If we can learn this together, okay? So we have it there. Is it, is it big enough for you guys? Can you see it? So let me just see if I should just, um, but how do I... Can I play it and make it bigger? Is it, is it okay? Is it readable? Okay. Okay. Do you feel so distracted when you have so much to do? Is your schedule overcrowded and you feel you're at the zoo? Perhaps you need to take a look and get yourself on track. It matters how you use your time, for you never get it back. Time is precious. Time is short. The Bible tells us to redeem it. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. So make the most of what is left. In our lives we must make choices as we take care of our health. It's the greatest gift we have, so let us guard it like our wealth. God gives each of us a special role that only we can fill. Let's say no to things that will not fit, and yes to things that will. Time is precious, time is short, the Bible tells us to redeem it. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. So make the most of what is left. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so what we'll do now, if you don't mind staying at the piano for a moment, we'll, see, we'll finish with that. I want to give a few moments for questions. Then we will 
pray. We'll sing and then I'll uh, finish so we can be done by 8.30. It's a time management, right? You've got to stay right on time. So um, any questions that you may have come? Has it been helpful to think about time? Okay, good. Anybody that has any questions? You guys are an amazing audience. I can't believe you're out here Friday night. I mean, usually you go to a church and there are just a few people. I'm just overwhelmed with such a beautiful response. Thank you for coming out tonight. I know you've had a long week and we want to get home and get some good rest. Any questions? Did that answer your question about the interruptions and how to go? Or you have another one? Okay, sure. How do you prioritize the priorities? How do you, how do you what? Prioritize the, the priorities. priorities. Okay. Have, like I have a myriad of things that have to be done. Okay. And um, you know, um, can't fit it into you know I'm not working right, right now, but I still can't fit, fit it into my. Okay. My my God schedule. I don't know. Um, part of it, is, I think, is that I'm looking at the big picture. I'm not that organized. That's why I came tonight, and um, this, uh, I think this is wonderful. But um, yeah, it, it's yeah, how just, do you do it? It, it? It's just hard because I, I find myself doing that uh, 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 Scarlett O'Hara thing. I, I can do that tomorrow. <laughs> you know. Okay. You know. Okay. So how do you schedule a priority? It's okay. So I'll give you an example. Um, I was reading on this author and he works so he said that he finishes his work at four o'clock and no matter how many more projects are on his desk or how many phone calls come in at four o'clock he goes home to spend time with his family so what I would recommend what I do is I do time blocks so let's say I get up in the morning and I have worship and my husband and I may go for a run if he's not flying and then I say okay I can either I have so much to do I have laundry and gardening and phone calls and emails and all that but if I don't set this block of time for when my mind is fresh in the morning, you know, your mind is most um, fresh and able to do harder tasks. So I set two hours to do harder work. So for me, is right now, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm getting certifications, I'm preparing workshops. And so I do that, and then I take a break. So you can do that. Do your most important, schedule your priorities. So, okay, what is your priority? So you put it down on the, on the list. And then you build everything around it. So as I said, take three things a day that you can work on. And maybe take that list, overwhelming list to prayer and say, God, I have all these things. It's like, you know, two feet of, of notes that I need to do. Show me today what I should focus on, three things. And you are going to start feeling so good. And small wins lead you to more accomplishments and make you feel not just busy but productive does that does that make sense so let's try that try that for a while just pick three things a day okay yes you have a question very good go ahead joe say it again how do you get not distracted and my husband i think had an answer how do you not get distracted? <laughs> well, some of us have different personalities, right? We're all different personalities, and some of us are easier distracted than others, right? So for me, for, m for me, my distraction is my phone. So guess what I do when I have to do my time blocks? Guess what I do? I go here, and I put my phone on do not disturb. So there's no phone call coming in, no text, no email except my daughter, my son, and my husband, and I have my mom and another really good friend that's like my American mom. So I don't get distracted because the phone is number one. Now, if somebody comes to the door, you have to go, right? So go, take care of it, and come right back to it. Does it make sense? So I think for us, a lot of our adults, we get distracted by the phone. So just turn it off and or just turn it on and put the people that are important to you that you need to get in contact with and if you get distracted with other things, just get right back to it. My wife helps keep me on task. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, any other questions about time management? Okay, 
So um, let's go ahead and do the song one more time. Do you like the song? Does it kind of bring everything together that we learned tonight? I just like music because it's just like the scriptures. It just helps us remember the things we learned about, right? So let's sing it again. Thank you, Joe and, and Trent. Do you feel so distracted when you have so much to do? Is your schedule overcrowded and you feel you're at the zoo? Perhaps you need to take a look and get yourself on track. It matters how you use your time, but you never get it back. Time is precious, time is short. The Bible tells us to redeem it. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. Make the most of what is left. In our lives we must make choices as we take care of our health. It's the greatest gift we have, so let us guard it like our wealth. God gives us a special role that only we can fill. Let's say no to things that will harm and yes to things that will. Time is precious. Time is short, the Bible tells us to redeem it. Once it's gone, it's gone forever, so make the most of what is left. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Father in heaven, for calling all of us to redeem the time to recover, to get back. And that's how you told us to do it, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added unto us to make the most of what is left. Lord, we commit our plans as we write them down, as we contemplate what is the assignment that you've given each one of us. Lord, help us to commit them to you, for you to adjust them according to your perfect will. And Lord, we want you to continue to show us the path and the purpose and the calling that you have for each one of us. Lord, let us be watchful for divine interruptions, those interruptions that may be divine appointments. Lord, but help us to work hard. Father, we know that you've given us an assignment. We want, when you come in the clouds of heaven, we want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And so, Lord, let us remember that when we pursue less in this world, we will be able to do the best in what matters most. And that is for us to form characters, to prepare for the searching judgment, to be ready for your soon return and to teach other people about you. Father in heaven, I ask for a special blessing for each and everyone here tonight. Lord, as they look at their schedule, as they look at their priorities, make it clear what you want them to do, Lord. And I ask, Father, in a very special way that we'll remember that the greatest work, the noblest effort of which men and women can engage is to point sinners to the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Lord, re help us to remember that time is precious, time is short. The Bible tells us to redeem it. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. So let us make the most of what is left. Time is short, you're coming soon. Help us to be ready for that glorious day. And not just us, but our families, our loved ones, and anyone that you put in our hearts to reach out to. So bless us now as we give, go home and get the rest we need. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you for the gift of the Sabbath and the gift of time. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Thank you again, Karen and your daughter and all the... Uh, AV team and Trent for singing for us. We're so glad you're here and we'll see you tomorrow. At what time is our next workshop? At 2 o'clock. Sharing the warmth, the power of hospitality. And Sunday morning at 930 is decluttering your home. So we're going to touch some kind of touchy subjects, right? You're getting into my stuff, but we're going to have so much fun together. And so we look forward to see you there. Good night. God is good.
Thank you so much, ABP.